What's going on people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here with another update for you guys. As you know, we brought you the update yesterday that Eric Ten Hag has got a meeting scheduled with the hierarchy at Tottenham. Well, that meeting has taken place and now Eric Ten Hag has signed an extension <laughs> on his Ajax contract until 2023 Classic. as confirmed by Ajax official today. I mean, it's just classic, isn't it? It's just classic. I mean, you weren't here yesterday, but we did a live stream, uh, got opinions of fans about who they want as manager. And the majority of people said Eric Ten Hag. The majority of people before that said Nagelsmann. <laughs> yep. Uh, on, on one by one, we're ticking them off the list, uh, ruling them out. But how many times has a, someone, a manager or a player, been linked with Spurs and then they go on to sign a new contract? It's literally happened countless amount of times. Happens over and over again. And this is just an, another um, an example of that. But um, it's a shame. It's a shame that, again, we um, failed to get one of our targets. And it's unclear at the moment whether... We backed out because he was going to sign a contract or we signed a contract because we backed out. Um, so it's not just a kind of chicken or the egg situation. I'm not sure which one's which. But yeah, it's, it'd be definitely, that, what is definitely true is we had a meeting with him and Romano said that meeting wasn't positive or whatever that means. And um, it's another target we can rule out. And I know he plays great football and everything and uh, another one people wanted, but I was never convinced he was the man anyway, to be honest, for me. Yeah, it was an interesting one because I spoke to the guys that we did a bit of content with um, around the Champions League semi-final, big Ajax fans, uh, work for TV out in um, Amsterdam. And I was trying to get some lowdown on Ten Hag and, and feeling like, well, the fans <clears throat> out, in, out in Ajax are thinking about him. And, you know, they said to me, they're not bothered at all if he leaves. I mean, they play great football. Um, they've won the league the last couple of years. But in terms of a personality and how he is, um, they're not such big fans of him. Well, there you go. And that says um, a lot for, for someone lot. that gets Ajax to the semi-final and and gets uh, the you know winning the league the last couple of years. It says a hell of a lot, I think, because he should be royalty there. And if they're not that interested, then maybe um, we're overlooking maybe how good he is. I think people a lot of the time get blinded by big trophies and like, oh, he won, he won the league at Ajax and stuff. But it can sometimes gloss over. Like Frank de Boer did very well at Ajax. He also won league titles and well, stuff. Well, Frank de Boer won four back-to-back -back leagues. Yeah. And but so there the you difference go. is with Frank de Boer, he was winning the league at a time when Dutch football was really down the shitter. I mean, there was no, he didn't have any sort of um, competition there when he was manager at Ajax. And they have PSV. Yeah, they got PSV now. I mean, the Dutch league is slightly a bit more competitive than it was then. Yeah, but I still wouldn't wouldn't but wouldn't say winning the Dutch league is uh, something that to be get overexcited about. Basically, yeah, getting to the Champions League semi final was really good, and they did it playing really scintillating football, um, which is fair enough. But um, I don't I don't know if he's the one to come into this club and um, build a project around. I wasn't never that convinced, but. It's also worth noting with Frank de Boer. Yeah, they won four back-to-back -back titles, but the football they played was rubbish. Was it? Uh, that's what they were telling me. They were saying, like, the football under Frank de Boer, yeah, we won a lot of trophies, but it just wasn't great. And the football under Ten Hag is night and day to what it was under Frank de Boer. Um, yeah, but then they, he does have a very talented set of players, didn't he? Frank de Jong, Hakim Ziyech, yeah, uh, Delight. Which he brought through. He did bring through. He helped bring through. Um, but a very talented set of players, though. And whether he can come into Spurs and do a similar thing, I don't know. I, I, well, I wasn't convinced. It's not going to happen now. So um, let's just let's just say see what Romano has been saying about the whole thing. And he said Eric Ten Hag did not reject Tottenham, and Daniel Levy decided to take a step back from negotiations after 48 hours of talks. After a meeting with Eric Ten Hag, Tottenham decided to pursue other targets. Um, and this one is a different one from the Spurs Express. And they say, we understand that during a meeting between Spurs and Eric Ten Hag, the club were put off by Ajax, by the Ajax boss, lack of fluent English, amongst other issues. Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting why they would point to a lack of fluent English when Pochettino was such a big success having not that great English when he came, although he had spent a bit of time in England under Southampton. His English wasn't great. And in fact, even early in his Spurs career, I think he still wasn't that confident speaking in English yeah. until um, I think Levy told him, "Look, yeah, your English isn't bad. Like, just be confident in yourself." And then he decided. Then he opened up a bit. But um, I, it's weird that that was one of the things that, that that was brought. But clearly, they weren't convinced by him. They they want to go pursue other options, and uh, is what it is. But I don't know. It's where the names are ticking away at the it moment. Really is. I mean, and I'm the lack of plan is one of the most worrying things. Exactly. That's the thing because the thing whatever you say about Daniel Levy, every time he sacked a manager from my memory, he's had a plan. He's had a plan in place. 
And right now, we're very reminiscent of Arsenal when they sacked Unai Emre. We all clowned on him at the time for not having a plan in place, uh, getting Freddie Lundberg in for, for a bit. And we're in exactly the same position at the moment. And it's very, very worrying. Yeah, I agree. The only difference I would say is when Arsenal did that, it was kind of midway through a season. So they were literally like their season was going down the toilet the longer they didn't yeah. appoint a manager. Whereas for us, our season's already down the toilet. This doesn't really matter. Um, but... Uh, like, who are the options left? Who are the options well, left who we're going to go for? Well, let's see what Dan Kilpatrick has said. He says Tottenham Hotspur could now turn their attentions to Graham Potter, Ralph Ragnick or Scott Parker as the club continues their search for a manager. And like, yeah. let's look at these three managers in isolation for a second because Graham Potter... Yes, uh, I know he's he's one of your number one choices, but still an underwhelming option. Underwhelming option. I mean, yeah, he he gets Brighton playing well, but he could still very well go down this season. I know it's an outside chance, but um, I, I know, like but Potter. I like Potter as a manager, but it's still they, underwhelming they, I after agree. Jose and Poch. The only reason I really like Graham Potter is because uh, with my, with when I see it with my eyes. When Ross Bryan play, like they don't have the the most high quality squad, but they pretty much every game they, they outplay the opposition. Yeah, like they, most games they've got players that's willing to work. Yeah, we need that. Any look, any, look. Oh, I hate this. Like any manager we have, we, they're gonna need to work. True. <laughs> any manager, no manager's like you know what, just take it easy and win the league. Like there's no, <laughs> there's no, there is no manager out there who's gonna not demand for our players. They are Premier League professionals who need to work hard to earn their money, and that's the that's it. That's it. And just because they didn't work under Mourinho and they didn't work under late last stage of Poch doesn't mean a new manager coming in is is not gonna demand the highest effort from them. And that's what we need from every demand player. It, but is he going to get it out of this current crop of players? That's the question. I know. That's probably not. That's why we need a rebuild, as we're continually saying. But um, I think Graham Potter can do a lot with a little. I think he can get us playing um, good football and start out playing the opposition again, which we haven't done for in a while now. And um, I think that's why he would be my man. And I think he can. He maybe he can bring Basuma with him, uh, if, 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 if that's possible, and stuff like that. So um, I'm a fan of Graham Potter. And I think he's done well at Brighton without... And uh, with every club he's been at, Swansea, Ostersons as well. He did really well at Ostersons. Um, and he's a young English coach. And yeah, he would be underwhelming after having Pochettino and, and Mourinho, two really great coaches, two of the best in the game at the time. But uh, this is where we are now. We've fallen. So we we were, we had an advantage over other clubs. And we had Pochettino. And we had a way of playing. We didn't build on it. We let our standards slip. We decided for uh, um, to try and save ourselves with this £15 million a year deal for Mourinho. That hasn't worked. And now we're back to square one. And that's what we have to build. That's what we have to realise. And uh, that's why I think Graham Potter would be my guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And, you know, that's Graham Potter. Ralph Rangnick, I mean, he's hardly managed in the last 10 years. Uh, for me, he's more of a director of football, get him in to nurture some talent um, and also kind of for our recruitment as well. Obviously, he's second to none in that sort of phase. But in terms of a manager, he's hardly done anything in the last 10 years. So I don't know why we would be looking at him as manager. And Scott Parker, he's only been in management for two years. One year, he won the playoffs with Fulham. The next year, he looks like he's going to get relegated with Fulham. So Scott Parker... Parker, yeah, do I think he's going to be a good manager one day? Yes, I do, but he's too inexperienced for the job at Tottenham right now. Look, the only reason you go for Parker is because you know him, he's cheap, and he's English, and he'll be a bit of a yes man. He's not going to kick up too much fuss. He'll probably be happy to be there rather than someone like Mourinho who's demanding all the time mm. uh, what he wants. So that's the, well, the only reason I can see um, them going with someone like Scott Parker. And uh, Ralph Ragnick... Yeah, I mean, uh, I know he's got good pedigree. He's he's on. He's like sixty two, so he's a bit old. He he last managed, I think Leipzig. I think it was in twenty seventeen or twenty sixteen. So it was it was quite a while ago. But he did he did a decent job there. He but never stays anywhere as manager for longer than two. Yeah, three he years doesn't well. stay. Yeah, that's that's the thing with Ralph Ragnick, and it's kind of like um, he's a bit of a you don't know what you're going to get with him. Like the enigma of Ralph Ragnick. That's what he's a bit is. like Bielsa in that sense, where yeah. you know Bielsa turns up someplace and he can be out within a few weeks, or he can be there for a few years. You don't really know. He's a bit of a hothead, but he's a revolutionary in terms of uh, a lot of people follow the way he kind of uh, plays the game and his coaching methods. Like he has a lot of disciples. So I don't know. Manager is the best thing, but uh, I think director definitely want him involved in the club. That's for sure. But uh, I'm not sure what that's what he wants. He apparently he was offered the Chelsea role, but he rejected it because he oh, wants really? a long term thing. 
Oh, really? He was offered interim, the interim oh. Chelsea job, but before Tuchel, oh, and uh, he re- he rejected them because he want he wanted a long term, he wanted to be there long term, so he didn't want to be there just interim. So um, it'll be interesting to see who what we do uh, from now to the end of the season. But uh, and I'm sorry, what we do uh, in terms of appointing a new manager, but it's just so up in the air. So up in the air because a joke. You, what's going we on? We don't know moment. if we're going to be absolute clowns, man. The manager won't know if we're in Europe or not right now. They won't know if our best players are playing right now. You know, there's tensions between the board and and, and the fans, which um, doesn't seem like letting up for the time being. Which would a would a manager want to step in and and um, be in the in the middle Poisonous of that? At the moment. Exactly. What manager want to be in the middle of that? I don't know. Um, like we're on a downward trajectory in terms of uh, where we're going as a club. So, like. It's, it's, it's not as attractive as it was uh, a couple of years ago. And that's all down to the upper management, how they've let this um, let this slip this uh, yeah. of how where we were. We were in a, such a strong position, new stadium, Champions League final, up and coming manager, like um, talented playing stuff, which needed a, a rebuild in certain areas. But we failed. We failed badly. And now we're just an absolute mess. Yeah. I mean, it seems as though this job is a bit of a poison chalice at the moment. Um, what's it? Alice the Gold came out a few days ago and said that Tottenham are expected to appoint a manager before the end of the season. But now, seeing as I mean, that was probably on the assumption that Eric Ten Hag was taking the job. But now, Eric Ten Hag has signed a new uh, contract with Ajax, and that seems to be dead in the water. Sky has come out today and said Tottenham are not expected to appoint a new manager before the end of the season there because the managers that we're looking at are all in jobs at the moment. So there you go. I mean, weather also points to potential international managers as well in Southgate and Martinez. I'm not 100% sure. But there's also managers in um, Germany and France. I think the Lille manager um, yeah, is potential. He looks like he's in talks with Nice at the moment. So there's him and then I think the Wolfsburg manager as well we've been interested in. So um, there's a few options at the moment, but it's narrowing down every day, and we're just we're getting not getting the man that we wanted. And uh, it doesn't it doesn't bode well when the manager that you're getting like is like fourth or fifth choice. It doesn't look great on that respect. But look, Pochettino was second choice or third choice, wasn't he? So and he yeah, did well. Who was first choice? Van Gaal. Van Gaal was the first <laughs> you know choice. I mean, Van Gaal, we didn't so. get him. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know where this club is going. It's a bit of a mess at the moment. Getting this manager search at the moment, um, <clears throat> sacking Mourinho with no plan. Uh, it may, every day it's looking more and more like it was just to save money for the for, for any potential clauses or anything. That. So, absolute mess at the moment at the top. Yeah. Absolute mess. And the last one we've got is about Gareth Southgate. As he is flattered by the interest shown by Tottenham Hotspur and would consider the position in the event that he is sacked by the FA. I mean, let's hope he's not sacked anytime soon. Then. Yeah, let's hope he's in a job because I can't. Be, I don't want him. I think look. Uh, so the thing with Southgate, I know he did a decent job with England at the World Cup and got to the semis, but his big achievement with England wasn't overachieving. It was achieving what we should have at the time because the only you know he's he's following perennial underachievers every every step of the way every tournament England have underachieved going out in the group stages going out to Iceland going out um, too early for what they had uh, going out in the quarterfinals when they had you know Lampard Gerrard Ashley Cole Rio Fern all these players and they couldn't get past the quarters so that was underachieving but getting to the semi final with the squad we had that was just achieving I mean, but it looked like semi final as well yeah exactly but it looked like overachieving because we've underachieved so consistently yeah. it looked like overachieving even, but Southgate yeah. never overachieved or anything like that. He just got some unity together and got us to a semi, which we should have got to anyway. So, look, I'm not convinced Southgate is anything special and he would be a good option for us. I'm really not. Uh, I completely agree. And um, when you look at the football he plays with the kind of players he has yeah, at his not disposal, it's not good enough, not good enough. But look, that is your update today. Eric Ten Hag is off the list as he has confirmed that his new contract with Ajax has been signed, sealed and delivered. The next few names that people are talking about are Graham Potter, Ralph Rangnick and Scott Parker, as confirmed by Dan Kilpatrick today. Let me know in the comment section below who you want as our next manager. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come, come on you Spurs. Spurs.